Okay, the next question is from Rebecca. She says, Paul, I've been hearing a lot about APOE4 or APOE4. I say it APOE4. Um, should I be worried about this? How do I know if I have this genetic polymorphism? And is it something to be aware of if you are eating an animal-based diet? So in the past, I've done APOE4 specific podcasts. This will just be a little snippet of those. And I will start high level and then get a little more specific before moving on. But my high level perspective on APOE4 is that if you are insulin sensitive, this is probably not something to worry about based on the literature. It's important to know that APOE4 is the ancestral genotype of APOE. APOE is an apolipoprotein present in our bodies. And APOE4 is what all of our primate ancestors had and what all of humans and prehominids had for millions of years. APOE3 appears to have arisen, I believe, 200,000 years ago. APOE2, about 80,000 years ago. Those numbers could be a little bit give or take. But remember that for the majority of pre-hominid and at least half of Homo sapiens evolution on this planet, everyone on the planet was APOE4. APOE44, to be exact. Homozygous for APOE4. So, why did APOE3 arise? Why did APOE2 arise? We don't really know. What we do know is that APOE4 appears to be protective against infections, parasitic infections. So is that some sort of a protective mechanism that was then less advantageous to humans as we evolved? Hard to say. Right now, APOE4 is present in, I would say, a minority of the population with the majority of us being APOE3, I believe, and a smaller fraction being APOE2. But and you look across the population broadly, APOE4 is associated with a higher risk of dementia, specifically Alzheimer's. Now, what we also know about our population is that the majority of us are insulin resistant. When you dig into the data, as I'll show you in a moment, I think that the data is less concerning for those who are insulin sensitive, and there is a connection between insulin resistance and increased incidence of dementia in those with APOE4. If you're interested in our history as humans, consider this paper, The Evolution of Human Apolipoprotein E Isoforms, Gene Structure, Protein Function, Interaction with Dietary Factors. You can see here from the abstract, the E4 allele is associated with an increased age-related disease risk, but also the ancestral form. So we must ask ourselves, was ApoE4 not advantageous to us for millions of years of human evolution and hundreds of thousands of years of evolution as Homo sapiens, during which we were very likely seeking out, treasuring, and celebrating saturated fat from animals and animal fats? It's an interesting question. I think it's quite compelling to consider that. And as you'll see in a moment, there are multiple populations on the planet of indigenous people who live closer to a hunter-gatherer lifestyle than we do as Westerners, in which APOE4 doesn't look to be harmful. So, raises a lot of questions. As for Rebecca's question about how do I know, you can probably get genetic testing through your physician. I did 23andMe. This is in the news a lot today. It's quite controversial. Apparently 23andMe sold some genetic data. I don't know if you guys want to do 23andMe and have your genetic data available to be sold. Uh, it's kind of a controversial thing, but I found it interesting. Perhaps some Russian hacker has my DNA somewhere and it will come back to bite me in the future, but it was powerful for me to know that I am APOE33 and other polymorphisms that I've discussed in the past. I'm homozygous for MTHFR, 677C to T. These sort of things are interesting to me and understanding how they affect my biology is important for me as a human in general. With regard to the ancestral versions of APOE4 and the risk of dementia and other issues uh, with cognitive decline in indigenous populations, consider this article, the inflammatory gene variants in the Chimene an indigenous Bolivian population with a high infectious load. Chimane is spelled T-S-I-M-A-N-E. And you can see from the abstract that in individuals who were carriers or had a copy or two, in individuals who were carriers of APOE4, there was less incidence of inflammation in response to uh, infectious load. And there are other articles showing there is actually less propensity toward dementia and cognitive decline. So in indigenous populations who are presumably fairly insulin sensitive without exposure to our processed diet, I would point to seed oils and processed sugar specifically, 
An ApoE4 variant is protective in some populations. This variant is not a clear sentence toward Alzheimer's or dementia in humans. There's more nuance here that we are not being told about. There's also this paper looking at ApoE4 in a Nigerian population, cholesterol, ApoE genotype, and Alzheimer's in the Nigerian Yoruba. As you can see here, there was a significant interaction between cholesterol, ApoE4, and the risk of Alzheimer's disease in the Yoruba, a population that has lower cholesterol levels, lower incidence rates of AD compared to African populations. And they found that ApoE4 was protective. They say here, increasing levels of cholesterol and LDL were associated with an increased risk of Alzheimer's disease in individuals without the ApoE4 allele, but not in those with ApoE4. There was no significant association between levels of triglycerides and Alzheimer's disease risk in those without ApoE4. There's also quite an interesting case study looking at an individual with ApoE4. This individual is heterozygous, one copy of ApoE4. Here is this case study titled ApoE4, The Door to Insulin-Resistant Dyslipidemia and Brain Fog. A case study, this was an individual, a, uh, a male who had dementia. And the way that dementia is often assayed is with various cognitive rating systems like the Montreal Cognitive Assessment, et cetera. Um, this individual was given a diet high in saturated fats and low in carbohydrates. Again, he was heterozygous for ApoE4. He was type 2 diabetic. And they say that uh, at the end of the intervention, this is just one case study, uh, the patient's MOCA, Montreal Cognitive Assessment, improved from 23 out of 30 to 29 out of 30. Uh, normal is greater than 26. His type 2 diabetes reversed. His pre-intervention hemoglobin A1C was 7.8. Post-intervention A1C, 5.5. Patient achieved statistically significant improvements in uh, markers of metabolic syndrome. The results of the case study suggest that a clinically prescribed ketogenic diet, strong potential to restore systemic insulin sensitivity, metabolic sensitivity, metabolic flexibility in a diabetic, even an ApoE4 heterozygous carrier. Most people within the nutritional community would point to this and say, that person should not get a ketogenic diet, not a high-fat diet, high in saturated fat because they have ABOE4, but everything got better <laughs> in this individual. His metabolic sensitivity got better, his dementia improved based on his MOCA rating, and he lost weight. So at least in this case study, we can substantiate or begin to look with more favorability toward the notion that ABOE4 does not mean dementia necessarily. And I would argue that it is all context with the most important context being, you guys will know the answer to this if you've followed any of my work in the past, your insulin sensitivity. Consider this article, demonstrated brain insulin resistance with Alzheimer's disease patients is associated with IGF-1 resistance, IRS-1 dysregulation, and cognitive decline. There is a mountain of research like this looking at what we would call type 3 diabetes, aka Alzheimer's. We know there is brain insulin resistance associated with dementia. And if you look at the research in people who are insulin resistant, it looks like ApoE4 heterozygosity or homozygosity, having an ApoE4 allele could lead to a higher preponderance of uh, problems with dementia. But kind of like the LDL issue, is it the ApoE4 or is it the insulin resistance? If you consider the Bolivian Yoruba or the Chimene, we can begin to make arguments that perhaps it is not ApoE4 as much as it is the insulin resistance. And in those with insulin resistance, does the ApoE4 genotype start to look a lot worse? Possibly. Remember that the majority of our population in the West is insulin resistant. And I think many researchers, nutritional and physicians, make this mistake. We try to extend our conclusions regarding an insulin resistant population to everyone, to all humans, many of whom who listen to this podcast may be working toward or have achieved insulin sensitivity. And I don't believe in that situation. We should fear saturated fats from animals, animal foods, red meat, even if you have an ApoE4 allele. I think those foods contain nutrients that are good for your brain and very possibly protective against dementia long-term. So something to consider. I would strongly rebel, question, ask for curiosity and look skeptically upon the across-the-board notion that those with ApoE4 variants should not be eating saturated fat.